Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany. Welcome to another video. And this one is one of many that was supposed to go up at the end of December, but I moved. I am in my new location. Nothing is set up yet, but this is the first video of many that should be going up that are a little bit backlogged, but it is my A Court of Silver Flames video. Uh, the first part is going to be my spoiler free thought thoughts, <laughs> my spoiler free thoughts of it. And uh, then we're going to get into like the vlog part that I did. And the very end is just going to be like my overall thoughts of the book that are going to be very spoiler filled. So I'll put timestamps that way you know when those things are happening. But before we jump into that, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsor for today's video, which is book of the month. So roll the clip. So Book of the Month is a super popular and fast-growing online book subscription service that was made for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and to help readers find books that they're going to love. And they do this by going through hundreds of potential book picks every single month to really find five books that they think their readers are going to love the most. These books are always either early release or new release, hardcover, books and they're getting you these new early release hardcover books for the best possible price and they've actually given me a coupon code for you guys if you use my name Brittany at checkout then your first book box your first month is actually nine dollars and 99 cents which is just a really good deal I mean we're all readers here we know how much those books cost plus you can always skip a month meaning that if there's ever a month that you don't love the books or you just aren't in the mood to get a book pick you can always move your credit on to the next month and then just pick it up then I've worked with book of the month a lot at this point I feel like if you're returning to my channel you definitely know that so I'm always grateful to them I love getting their books every single month they really do expand my reading taste because they do tend to be adult fiction books which I actually have discovered I do like some adult fiction books which is a cool it's a cool thing you know but let's go over really quick their January picks um let's start with what's in the box I think that this is actually an add-on so yes but the book in the box is the maid by nita prose this is actually one of their add-ons book of the month on top of offering the five book picks for that month also offer add-ons you can add up to two every single month and these add-ons include previous book picks for previous months and also just some extra fun ones that they've you know got their little logo on which is nice and let's go into the five book picks for January. The first one is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins and it says they're dying for an escape so I can assume that this is a thriller. Then we have Fiona and Jane by Jean Chen Ho and this is actually a debut author and it is a collection of short stories. Then we have Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly and this is actually a debut author as well and it is a romance novel. This cover is stunning. It's The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis and it's a historical fiction. And then we have Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson and this is actually an early release and a debut author and it is contemporary fiction. So if you wanted to get your hands on any of these books just follow the link down below and if you are a first time subscriber definitely use the code that way you can get your first box for just $9.99 and again the code is my name so that's Brittany. Um, but I'll leave it all linked down below. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video and now let's get on to my spoiler free thoughts of A Court of Silver, of a court of silver Flames. This part's going to be brief just because again spoiler free at this point in the series is very difficult. I'm going to keep it spoiler free for the entire for the most part for the entire series. Um, I say for the most part because obviously like names alone are in general I guess a slight spoiler but no this is this is spoiler free it's just we're halfway through a series you know like you can't expect me to not at least kind of talk about events happened in past books that have come out years ago so Court of Silver a Court of Silver a Court of Silver Flames I really enjoyed this I kind of actually am between more of like a four and a half and a five star with this just because the ending for me was not it. I mean, it was fine. 
It was just, it felt entirely unnecessary for me. It's a trope that I'm not very fond of and it's one that I'm tired of seeing. Overall, this is a story about Nesta and Nesta is Feyre's oldest sister. She is a very unlikable character. I mean, throughout A Court of Thorns and Roses, the trilogy, she grows and she changes and you kind of get to know maybe a little bit of why she is so the way she is. I'm gonna put this over here because I don't wanna hold it. But at the end of the day, she is still an unlikable character. I get why a lot of people don't like her. A lot of people were not excited about a Nesta story and didn't want to see it. Personally, I was very excited for the Nesta story. Nesta is one of those characters that I have always begrudgingly related to. I kind of mentioned this throughout my vlogging, but the thing for me at least, in all of Sergei Mass's female lead characters, so like Selena, Bryce, Feyre, have always been fighting for others. They're very selfless, even if they can Selena specifically come off as selfish. Can I literally help you? There's a ginormous RC Willy truck backing up for no good reason. We're just gonna ignore it. They've always been very selfless. They've been very good at their core. So even in their like rough times, they've just still been fighting for something bigger than themselves. And Nesta as a lead is not necessarily fighting for anyone but herself. We get to see that a lot in this book. And in general, I think that makes her an unlikable character to most people uh, just because selfish people tend to be unlikable because they're out for themselves. They're not gonna really care about other people's emotions, obviously. And in that way, I was very excited to see her story. I wanted to know what had made her this way when, you know, her sisters have turned out so differently. And it is after the events of A Court of Wings and Ruin, also A Court of Frost and Starlight, but that's the novella. We are seeing a version of Nesta that's at her very worst. And because of that, this is a story a lot like maybe Air of Fire or A Court of Mist and Fury. If you're familiar with like how Sarah J Maas tends to write her, her low points. And because of that, I was already very, very excited going into the book. Air of Fire and A Court of Mist and Fury are my top two books that she has ever written. And Nesta being the kind of character she is, felt like this is gonna be the most relatable for me at least. And while I will say that the pacing in this is fairly slow in the beginning. Not a lot is going to happen for quite a few hundred pages. I would still really say I enjoyed it. It's a lot of emotional stuff going on. It's, I wouldn't even say character growth, but it is a very character driven beginning. There is an underlying plot going on that we do get to see come to for the most part fruition towards the end but for the most part in the beginning it is character driven entirely and it's following Nesta as she learns to be with the inner circle because she is no longer sustainable as what she what she was becoming in the previous books and she's an unwilling participant in this. Uh, that's that's kind of where I'm gonna leave that. Uh, she, she's being forced to change that's that. Like I said, the pacing in the beginning is very slow. I feel like the end was maybe a bit rushed and I will again say that the thing that happens in the end, the very very end, felt predictable to me. There was a lot of easter eggs leading up to it throughout the book and knowing how Sarah J Maas writes, I felt that this is where it was going. Do I love it? No. Am I very curious to see what it's going to be like in the next book? Yes, uh, it, it left on enough of a cliffhanger that I'm curious. I, I think, and I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the next book is actually going to be not following Nesta, but I could totally be making that up, so ignore me in that case. I don't know if Nesta would be entirely as enjoyable as in this book. I don't know what is so enjoyable about watching like a self-destructive person self-destruct, but she's not nearly as self-destructive in the end. I don't think that that's a spoiler. I think that that's and that's how the things go, you know? Is that all I wanted to talk about? The romance in this, it's pretty, it's pretty typical of Sarah J Maas. The smut in this is, it's cool. We could have seen this coming because if you did read House of Earth and Blood, Bryce has a little bit more experience, I would say, than Feyre or Selena ever did. And Nesta is, I'm not gonna say too much. What I will say is the smut in this is good. 
it's um, different. I wouldn't say it's romantic. I would say it's kind of filthy. Uh, not maybe as filthy as like a true romance would be, but I will say that like the scenes that were in here, I was, I was like blushing. That's that. I feel like those are the big points. I mean, the plot in this I think is really cool. I like where this is headed. I, it doesn't feel like it's a forced plot. When I first heard that Sarah J Maas was going to be continuing with the series, I was nervous because it felt like everything had definitely ended in the previous books. So I thought it was going to be a very forced and unnecessary plot, but this actually does feel authentic and I am very excited to actually see where the next ones go. But is it predictable? I would say so. Is it not going to be like everyone's favorite? Probably. If you don't love Sarah J Maas, this is definitely not going to be for you. Uh, it's still very typical Sarah J Maas. It's, it's very, very typical of her story arcs and the way that she writes and the way that she writes romance, the way that she writes emotions. I do really love, though, how she writes emotions. I think that she's very good at showing like a mental health journey in that way, like the downfalls and the ups and the downs and the uh, the ways that different people deal with their issues. I think that's always been my favorite part about Sarah J Maas's writing. It's not very surprising that I would love this book so much, whether it was slow or not slow, whether the ending was to my liking or not to my liking. This I think after talking about it, it's definitely still a five star book. So let's get into the vloggy bits. This is where it gets a little bit spoiler filled. So you, you've you been warned. I'll see you at the end, I guess. Oh my God, guys. I think it's happening. Ah! Got my iced coffee, some stickies. I'm gonna annotate differently this time. Oh, I'm not showing my face because um, <laughs> I just woke up. And I have a Argentinian breakfast bar. <laughs> Let's freaking do it. Oh my God. I'm doing my annotating a little differently, but we'll see if uh, I do a lot in this round. I think that I just want to start reading books all the way through with no pressure of doing annotations, which is why I only brought stickies versus like my stickies and my pens. And then like in second read throughs, I will do annotations. But like if there's something that really stands out to me, I have my stickies, that way I can kind of mark the page. So, ignore the, the crumbs. <laughs> it's, uh, what is it? It's July, and I'm finally, finally starting A Court of Silver Flames. Welcome to the spoiler-filled vlog. Look at that map! Wait, wait, I missed a page, I missed a page. I haven't even opened this, guys. How exciting is this? For every nest out there, climb the mountain. Oh. I've always said I related a lot to Nesta more than Feyre. Oh my god, look at this map. Our girl went off. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Mm. Black water nipping at her thrashing heels was freezing. All right. I'll talk to you guys I'll, in, I'll, when I look more presentable. <laughs> okay, I lied. So this little prelude was Nesta going into the cauldron and it was so so cool to see her perspective I mean this little part alone in the beginning and in the end there was darkness and nothing more I loved it and then just this wrapped in black eternity Nesta and the cauldron twined burning through the darkness like a newborn star like seeing her perspective of how she stole that piece of the cauldron it's just oh I'm going I'm going to love this, guys. I I can't I can't say this isn't going to be biased. Like, we all know I just really love Sarah J. Mass's books. She she really does something with her writing for me. <sighs> Part one, novice. Oh, Cassian. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. All right, officially taking a break for today on page 38. Not much has happened yet, but spoiler alert, I'm loving it. 
Oh gosh. It's so weird because the thing with Feyre's character as much, also I'm still not showing my face. Maybe I should get ready and then we'll talk about it. Um, that's why I'm actually taking a break is to get ready. Okay, no, we'll talk about it now. But basically the thing about Feyre's character that as much as I have like felt a kinship with her throughout the books and uh, understood her journey, she is too good for me to completely relate to. And in that sense, I feel like I've always felt a little bit more kindred with like Selena, but she was also a little bit too mm, full of herself, I guess, is the right word to say for me to completely get it. But Nesta, especially now, like when we're finding out more about her character, she's just like, she's not ready to admit to herself what she feels most of the time and so she just like covers it up with they explain it as like rage but then nesta feels it almost like emptiness and like she does feel rage obviously but she just doesn't want to feel hurt and that is something that i personally just get like i just get about her i love nesta i love how misunderstood she is and how angry she is and how she doesn't care like she is only looking out for herself in a lot of ways and i think that that is the reason that i would probably relate to nesta more than Feyre or selena ever because Feyre and selena were never just looking out for themselves like really never they were always looking out for someone and that is actually not something that i could personally ever relate to unless you're talking about like my cats because then yeah totally looking out for them <laughs> Tell me how I only just realized that the main reason I put down A Court of Silver Flames between this clip and then the next one, which is in October, is because I picked this up July 5th. Guess what day I, I officially found out I had COVID? July 7th. No, wait. July 6th. July 6th. Because that Tuesday, I was like, I don't feel good. Wednesday, I officially got diagnosed. And my voice already sounded rough in this. Like, that is so weird to, like, see. So this is just me cutting in to be like, oh, the main reason I put this down in the first place was because I was sick for a month. Makes sense. But let's get back to it. So I'm driving. But um, I need to talk about A Court of Silver Flames. I finally picked it back up last night. I'm in a physical reading mood after finishing Addie LaRue. And I was like, I'm gonna take advantage of this. Sorry about this lighting. We're driving. Guys, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm on page 220-ish, something like that. And I just, I feel so much for Nesta. I knew that her story was gonna like hit home because I don't know. It's just, she makes sense to me. I think that a lot of times her character is misunderstood by everyone around her. And mostly, I mean, like, it makes sense. Like, if someone is, like, verbally cruel to you, there's no need to sit there and be like, I wonder what's behind this. There's literally none of that. Like, you can, you can just, like, be like, hey, I didn't want to talk to you, but that's fine. But I completely relate to her in that way because she is, like, hurting so much inside and she's so cruel to herself and she's overthinking everything and she is so envious of everyone around her and she also just doesn't feel worthy of having like all of these people's love she doesn't first of all like understand how they're okay when she's not because she's supposed to be the strong one and she doesn't feel worthy of their love like they they're trying to be there for her and it makes her more angry and she lashes out at them because she doesn't feel like they need to be around someone like her. Like, they don't deserve to be around someone like her. Oops. I feel like the lighting looks better outside. I'll finish the update outside. And that so often is like something that isn't able to be understood by people that love you, I think. It's, it's just like, you wanna help, like you wanna help and it doesn't make sense why people can't be vulnerable in that way. And she has such a problem with showing vulnerability and she has so much pride. And like, for her, like being weak or, uh, coming off as if she doesn't know something is worse than death. Like in so many ways, her character arc just rings so true to me because that's something that I 100% relate with in all manners. I think that you guys see like a very 
nice side of me on my channel, which is great. I think that I should always be nice. I think that I also have a kind of warped perception of how I am as a person, but I don't ever feel as though I'm very nice in real life. Or maybe it's because, I don't know, I don't think I ever want to be purposefully like randomly cruel to people just for fun. That's not something I do. But I think that like the like my my inside voice, the one in my head, the one that I don't tell the people, the one that I wouldn't say out loud can be just so cruel, is really cruel. And I, for a long time, fed into it. And I mean, I still do in some ways. It's not something that you just turn off. But her inner voice, her inner monologue is something that I relate to 5,000%. I, I understand it. And like even like the struggles she has with like the people that love her, the way that like she doesn't want to open up, the way that she, how frustrating it is for everyone to see that. And it's just so frustrating for me too because they don't see it. Like they're not supposed to, but it just feels like it's so obvious, I guess. Like when you're the person doing it, it feels like it's so obvious that you're doing this for them or like you're, uh, I don't know. And it's not obvious, I guess, is what I'm saying. And it's cool to see both perspectives. It's cool to see the person that loves perspective and it's amazing to see Nesta's. I, I'm loving this, if you couldn't tell. I just got home. I came for my, I have a break at work and I wanted to sit here and read. So that's what I'm going to do. I just wanted to do an update because I feel like things are actually going to start like progressing soon. And I wanted to be able to tell you how I felt before that. So I'm finally reading again, guys, like physically reading. It's a good feeling. Watch me end up doing all of my updates from the car. Last night I read a lot more, um, a ton more. I hope this isn't going through my AirPods. Ooh, that'd be dumb. Okay, so last night I read a ton more and I'm on page 400 now. I, I can't, I don't, um, I think this is a spoiler filled review, right? Like this part of my vlog. So uh, if it is, I don't know. I feel like I almost wanna make this a non-spoiler vlog. Okay, spoilery part right now, just, I'll put a I'll put a warning. They did it. They did the deed. They they had the they did it. <laughs> it it was good. There's been a lot of build up to this scene. Like there's just been so much foreplay. I mean, like a lot. And Nesta is oh, she is I respect it. I respect it. I'm enjoying that part a lot and I'm loving I mean, I honestly was wondering how they were going to build up to the, like, sex scene just because, at least in, like, A Court of Mist and Fury, we had, like, really a hate to love thing going, and I felt like that was kind of what was trying to happen be between Cassian and Nesta, but, like, there's just so much more history and, like, so much more readiness, I guess, that I was like, I feel like there's no way to make this slow burn, but it was slow burn enough. I mean, that was, like, about half a little bit over half of the book to get to the smutty, smutty scene where they banged. And I kind of love it because Nesta is in her head about all this. She's like, no, this is just sex. This is nothing. This means nothing. I can't give you anything. Like this whole like thought process, she always leaves the person. She doesn't ever want to be left. She doesn't want to like commit herself in any way. And Cassian, he's just, he's like some of the annotations I'm doing, I don't know how golden retriever boys always end up with just like mean, mean girls, like mean cat girls. I act a lot like my cat, so I feel like I can say that, you know, like he loves love when he wants love and every once in a while he'll look you dead in the eye and just knock something off table as you're telling him no and he knows, you know, that's what I mean by mean cat, <laughs> but that's them in a nutshell and I love it so much but he doesn't really give into it too like he plays the game I mean when she said just sex he was like I'll give you anything like I'll I'll take anything you give me they bang and he leaves like she was ready for some like she literally said I kind of expected some cuddles like I thought this was gonna be a little bit more I know I said that but like I wanted some cuddles and then I'd kick him out and he didn't do that like he played his own game with it and I love that and even like all these scenes because now we're on the sword we're on a sword fighting like scene I just I love the way that Nesta is forming relationships with these other girls that are like strong and yet also have been through so much because I think that like it's easy to kind of dismiss like Nesta and her anger as I don't know I, I think like there's a good point in this where they're talking about Elaine just before this and they're looking for the trove and everyone wants Nesta to do it and Cassian's like 
why, you know? And it's Reese and Cassian talking about it. And Reese is like, or Azrael says something along the lines of like, Elaine can't be exposed to this, like to this darkness. And Cassian was like, and Nesta can? And it's such a good point because like we have like this idea that she's so big and strong and can defend herself and she can face down all these big bad things, but like that's not the case. She has just as much experience in all these like terrible awful things as Elaine does and it's just so wrong to put them against each other in that way because they're both being traumatized and at least Elaine is being coddled. Nesta will never be coddled, first of all because she doesn't want it and second of all because people don't see her in that way. I don't know. I there was the scene that like Reese comes in and Nesta's having her nightmare and I loved this scene. I really really loved this scene because this whole time Reese has really been letting me down. He's my man's and I've just been very upset with him. But she starts having her nightmare and there's just silver fire in the room and right as she's about to completely explode out all the windows, Reese Reese's darkness comes smothering in to try and smother her flames. And it's a big fight and I was even thinking to myself like who's going to win? She's I'm assuming going to become like a death lord, a death lady that they were talking about in the very beginning because she stole death from the cauldron. And even at the end of that scene, Reese says pure death. Like that is what I felt. So I'm assuming that's kind of what she is. And I don't know if Reese can really stand up to that, but we don't, I don't know. She also like bowed her head. So maybe she doesn't think she could win. Who knows? But after Reese goes into her nightmare and he's able to see more of the trauma, he kind of turns to Cassian and he's shaking and I thought at first it was because of the battle but it was because of what he saw like he never understood how thoroughly traumatic it was for the cauldron to invade Nesta's body and force her humanity out of her and force her to become something she wasn't like it took everything from her and it gave her things she did not want like there is such like a parallel throughout this whole thing of like what the cauldron did to her and the priestesses that are in the library that like the the ones that have been sexually assaulted there's a huge parallel being drawn between the two experiences and for good reason they're they're different but they're both equally traumatic in the way that like there was no there was no consent there was no way to say no and they both had their bodies violated in a way that has now made them very insecure and untrusting of their own bodies and Reese finally understood that and you could tell he kind of felt bad for everything that he'd been saying and doing towards Nesta and Nesta is someone that loves control too like she needs control I think it's why she's like so weird in her or not weird but so you know in her sex life but she needs control in every other aspect of her life that's what her mother bred into her her grandma everyone bred control into nesta she loves control and that is one point in her life that she was completely out of control she had no control she has no control when it comes to the cauldron and they keep making her relive her trauma to call upon the cauldron and it's just i don't know i think reese finally got it and i am glad he did because dude she's strong but she's not that strong you know what i mean i don't know I'm excited to see where her character is going, but back to the point where I'm glad that the priestesses are finally training with Nesta because it is, I mean, everyone always says that if you're in a dark place, like exercise actually really does help you. It's the release of toxins in your mind really helps you out, all that kind of stuff. And I love all like the breathing techniques that are being talked about in this kind of very like yoga style and strengthening your core and doing things with the flow of your body and calming yourself and being able to like push your mind out of the distraction of whatever it might be going through and I'm so happy that the priestesses are finally joining in because not only is it like something that can make them feel secure in their own bodies again like feel like they have ownership of their own bodies again but also like makes them feel strong like they're never gonna be the weakness that they once felt is not going to be something they have to feel ever again they're gonna be able to protect themselves they're not gonna be that vulnerable and I love I just love the way that this book is taking that on I think it's I think it's really I like it I love how Nesta is with them there's a good point that Cassian has at one point just recently where he says maybe that's why Nesta likes to be with these people because she can just be Nesta she has none of the baggage and she is just Nesta. With her sisters, she has so much baggage from her mother, from everything that her family like put onto her, from everything she feels, like the guilt that she feels with Farah and the protectiveness she feels over Elaine. She is something to everyone. She is a character to everyone. And these new people that are just meeting her, she can just be herself with. And it's such an important like 
topic because even still like Reese is just always trying to push Feyre onto Nesta like they no, no one understands why Feyre why Nesta doesn't want to talk to them if she loves them so much they're like offended by it but it's not really anything like that and I think that like the way that we get to see her interact with new characters is so much it's like proof of the kind of person she can be that she doesn't let herself be around everyone else because everyone else already has a preconceived idea of her so she has to live up to their ideas I don't know I'm really relating to Nesta in so many different ways and like her way of thought and her like abrasiveness and I'm loving this so I needed, wow, I took 10 minutes out of my, I only have 20 minutes left of my break. I want to read. I'm going to read. I'm going to read. <laughs> I love how that whole talk started with me talking about the sex scene. We'll talk more about the smut later. <laughs> Even this whole thing where Nesta is finally understanding that she's not going to be perfect at something the moment she tries it and that to not be perfect doesn't mean to be weak. I swear I don't normally annotate this much in this book. We're just on a good chapter. <laughs> So, 
for my spoiler peeps, for the ones that stayed. I don't have footage of me reading the very end. I would have thought that I did, but no, there's a lot that we did not talk about in the vlog. I made notes because while editing this video, I realized that there was just so much that I didn't cover and I wanna talk about it here. Let's start with this whole scene. So, okay, we're talking about the explosion. Like, uh, Nesta's lowest low point, I guess, but it's right after she made the three magical weapons, something that hasn't happened in centuries, you know? And she is talking to Cassian in the library and Cassian's kind of like, well, what would you name him? And then he kind of spills the beans <laughs> and tells her, oh, well, you, you did make three magical weapons. And she's like, that's so cool. But I mean, who is we? Like, how do, how do who's the we that knows that I did this? And he's like, you know, me, Reese, Feyre, the others, and she kind of gets fixated because she realizes that everyone has known for quite a while and no one's telling her because once again, they don't trust her and they don't feel that she is prepared for the knowledge, which is not something that Nesta would ever be okay with. Nesta is not that hard to understand when you know that she needs control, when she wants to know everything and feel like she knows everything because what's worse to her is ignorance. Like she hates the idea of being ignorant or being thought of as ignorant, but he finally tells her that the people that voted to not tell her, one of them was Amran. And this entire time, like Amran and Nesta's relationship were was very confusing to me because I couldn't really remember what had happened between them in A Court of Frost and Starlight for them to just not be talking at all anymore. When Nesta hears this, she just kind of goes numb because Amran was always the one that understood her, the one that uh, wanted to befriend her even when no one else did, the one that was never scared of her. And so to finally see that like the only person that had ever kind of even gotten a chance to understand Nesta was now completely against her and didn't really look like she was changing her mind anytime soon is Nesta's like snapping point. Even like the way that she comes to this, I love how Sergei Mass writes the train of thought, like the way that you can just spiral right here. She made a show of rolling her shoulders, of approaching Emery and Gwen, whose face is bunched with concern in a way Nesta knew she didn't deserve, in a way that she knew would one day vanish when they too realized what a wretch she was. When Amran told them what a pathetic waste of life she was, or they heard it from someone else and they ceased being her friends. She wondered if they'd even say it to her face or if they'd just disappear. And that scene to me is, I mean, I think we can all, I mean, maybe not. At least personally, I very much related to like that, that spiral. I mean, it's easy to fall into that mindset when you feel like your friends don't stick around. Nesta's never had someone there for her, ever. She was always having to fend for herself. She was always the only person she could rely on. She was always just by herself. And Amran was the first real friend that she had started to have and Amran abandoned her. And now she's starting to make real friendships with Gwyn and Emery and she's just terrified that they're just gonna leave her too because everyone else already has, so why wouldn't they? And this is all coming just so quickly and it's just, you can see her thoughts spiral. It makes, it makes you sad. It made me sad. And instead of letting this turn into sadness, she lets it turn to fury, which I get that. I get not wanting to feel sad and instead wanting to just burn, you know? And she just starts running down those stairs. She's never even made it halfway, a quarter of the way. And she is so mad that she makes it all the way down into Valaris from the tower. And she knows exactly where the hell she's going. She's going to Amran because, you know, why not be furious at the one person that's currently the one that hurt you the most, you know? Like the irony of her literally knocking down the door and Amran and uh, what's his face banging, what the hell, you know? Like that that was so unnecessary, but I love it too. That seems very Amran. And even like the way that she's talking to Amran because Amran's pissed, obviously. She just broke her door and she interrupted a, a moment. But what she's saying to Amran is just, uh, it hurts because what she says is literally like, you voted against me. Amran's saying, you have done nothing to prove you are able to handle such a terrible power. On that barge, you told me as much when you walked away from me. From any attempt at mastering it, I offered to teach you more and you walked away. And that's an unfair thing because, I mean, Nesta never wanted this power, never wanted to be Fae, never wanted any of this. Why would she ever expand on like the knowledge that she has been forced 
to have. This really goes back to the whole consent thing. There's a very huge comparison being drawn between the priestesses in the library and what happened to Nesta in the cauldron. I've said this, I stand by it. Then she says, I walked away because you chose my sister. Just as Elaine had done, Amran had been her friend, her ally, and yet in the end it hadn't mattered one bit, she'd picked Feyre. And then Amran's obviously like, she's more mature, she has a more clear side of this, and she's like, I didn't choose anyone, you spoiled girl. Like, she, she realizes that more than one person can be friends, and it just kind of keeps like getting worse and worse for Nesta, because she's just spiraling about her life with Feyre, about whether Feyre loves her, about everything, you know? Okay, Feyre just goes there to try and stop whatever's happening between her and Amran, and Nesta decides, like, you know what? I'm gonna burn all my bridges today. I'm gonna burn them all, like, because fuck this. No one's gonna like me anyways in the end. I might as well deal as much pain as I'm feeling right now, in short. So when Feyre's trying to stop everything and she's like, Amran is my friend and has been a member of this court for centuries. I offer her respect, and Nesta goes, is it respect that she offers you? Is it respect that your mate offers you? Feyre went still, and Amran's like, don't you say one more fucking word. And then Feyre obviously is like, what? And Nesta didn't care, couldn't think around the roaring. Have any of them told you they're respected, high lady, that the babe in your womb will kill you? The wings, Nesta seethed. The boy's Illyrian wings will get stuck in your fey body during the labor and it will kill you both. And of course, you know, Reese knew, everyone knew, and Feyre starts to cry, and then Nesta knew that, um, this part was kind of sad because it wasn't just that she realized, you know, she messed up, but it was her moment being like, and Nesta knew then that she had not once in her life been loved by her mother as much as Feyre already loved the boy growing within her. It broke something in Nesta broke that rage. She'd gone too far. This is an interesting scene because throughout all of A Court of Thorns and Roses, we see Feyre's perspective of how their mother had never loved her and how much that hurt her and that, had, that her mother had only ever loved Nesta. And in this book, we're seeing that Nesta was destroyed by her mother's love, like her mother's attention. You wouldn't even be able to call it love because her mother was just trying to create another version of herself, a perfect, a perfect, breedable human girl that should find the best man to increase their fortune. That's what their mom was trying to do. And Nesta was almost protecting her sisters from the same fate of just unrealistic expectations of pain, of never being good enough, of always coming up short, of never being worth love if you weren't good enough for the love. That was what their mother had taught Nesta. And this whole scene is just like kind of combining all of these feelings of how she just feels like she's unlovable, how people just leave her, how everyone loves everyone except for her because she's unlovable. And it's just really sad because, again, I've mentioned this, no one that's being on the other end of her cruelty is at fault for not wanting to, for not wanting to deal with her or understand her. But like being in her head, I don't know how anyone couldn't feel sympathy for Nesta. Like even if you don't relate to her, even if, that's not your thing. Maybe maybe you don't explode at people if you're if you don't understand your feelings. Her complexity is just so so much. I I love I love it. I love everything about it. And then from here, I'm not going to like read every line for line like I just did because that was that was a lot. But from here we have the actual like epic scene of like her true breaking point. Uh, Cassian comes in because you know Reese is going to literally kill Nesta if she doesn't get out of the city and he takes her on a hike. <laughs> he takes her on a hike and he doesn't freaking talk to her because he's pissed. He's pissed that he told that she told Feyre the way that she did. He's pissed that like she's burned all these bridges when he's been trying to like talk her up to his friends. Like he has been putting in work trying to make her likable to everyone around them and she has just annihilated all of it. She's proven to everyone why they shouldn't actually give her a chance at all. And Cassian's pissed because he loves her and he knows like that she's worth it But like when she does sh shit like this, he's done. He's he's done because he is and he's so done that he doesn't realize like where Nesta is broken You know, he takes her on that hike. He gives her this ginormous pack That's like literally what her weight plus more doesn't talk to her and he forces her to walk and the this whole <sighs> 
I feel like a broken record, but this really did resonate with me. Like, with the way that I, at least, deal with, um, with those kinds of emotions of, you know, what she's going through. She just is, like, shut down. She will not complain because, first of all, Nesta can never seem weak. She refuses to ask for help because Nesta can never seem weak. She will always push because she wants to meet people's expectations and uh will refuse to tell cassian when like literally the weight is just too much and she just also doesn't talk she doesn't talk to him she doesn't try to start a conversation he doesn't really try to start a con conversation but she is literally mute this is kind of where we finally learn that the reason that she can't stand fire which i wasn't sure where it was going to go but where it went she hears this is actually not where we find out, but I'm gonna combine it with like when we do find out because this whole time she's listening to the crackling of the fire every night and she isn't really sleeping. She hates fire. She hates fire more than anything. And Cassie knows it. He's kind of doing it to punish her kind of because, you know, they need the fire. And this whole scene of her just really being actually very self-destructive because not only did she burn bridges, but now she is not looking out for herself because in the hike, she's not sleeping she's not telling him that she can't stand the fire she's carrying way too much weight she's barely you know put on any muscle this is just a lot and then she finally does have that moment where she just passes out like four days in or something too little water and she hasn't been talking and then she just passes out and Cassine's freaking out because of course and he's like why didn't you tell me why didn't you say anything and it's like how did you not see this coming my dude like when would she ever admit that this was too much for her that is not that is not in Nesta's vocabulary Wait, is this before or after the dancing scene? Because I also really want to talk about that. But okay, let's let's finish this up first. I thought that this this whole hike, I mean, a little bit cheesy because obviously at the end they get to the destination and it's a place where people go to heal and it's a hike that people do to heal and he kind of put a little extra pressure on her but like now she's letting it go like she's finally ready to at least appear weak in front of him and she just breaks down sobbing and I think that's when we learned that the crackling of the fire the reason she can't stand it is because it sounds exactly to her like the snapping of her dad's neck I mean we you know that if you're you're here but it's like, how do we, this really goes back to my thing that people just assume that Nesta is strong because she doesn't show when she's upset and she's going through it. Like she's been through a lot. She's been through just as much as a lead. A lead literally shut down in A Court of Wings and Ruin and you're not letting Nesta shut down right now. I, I, I hate it. I like, I really do because I understand it. I get it. Like, the lead shows that she needs people there to support her, so people are going to bend over backwards to support her. Nesta refuses to show that she needs she needs time to heal, that she's broken, and people just treat her like garbage because they don't they don't know. And they're not going to know, and that's fair, and I get it, but I'm pissed because like it's traumatic. Just because she's like um a cold individual does not mean that she's not still traumatized by watching her dad die, by not being good enough to save him, by not being good enough to save Farah, by not being good enough ever. Like really quick, let's just touch on the the heiress scene because I really loved just like finding out that Nesta is like an incredible dancer. That made me very, very happy. I don't remember if it was before or after the scene. Either way, you know, they, they find out that Nesta can freaking dance and she can win anyone's attention while she's dancing. She's already stunning. Like drop dead scary gorgeous but when she shows up she, oh well, lead tells that one story of like when she was like 14 or something and she got the guy that was supposed to propose to whoever's party it was that night like he wanted to propose to her but that got the idea in their heads they invited Eris to the court of nightmares and she gets in this like stunning pretty beautiful gorgeous dress and then she's dancing and she is dancing better than any of these fae who have lived hundreds of years have ever seen and i love it i love that like our cold mean cruel girl has like something this this beautiful to be a part of her because dance takes a lot of precision a lot of practice a lot of discipline and 
those are all things that like you know Nesta definitely has but it's something that you wouldn't have initially related to her because it's so in some ways like feminine and graceful and you don't automatically think of that with Nesta and so I just loved seeing it I loved seeing that everyone was in love with her I loved seeing Eris be in love with her and then I loved I loved I loved that Cassian had been taking secret lessons with more just so that he could dance with Nesta that was like you know it was just but yeah, that was just fun. I wanted to talk about it. The rest of this is more, I guess this is kind of where I got not bored with the story, but obviously, obviously Nesta had to change in this. She is now connected with her emotions. She's more willing to show them. She's more willing to be not on guard all of the time. And that is a journey that I respect and I understand. And I feel like maybe one day I should take, but because I personally don't I'm not there yet, I guess. Watching it was just kind of like, oh, okay. So my my mean, cruel, cold, selfish girl is not that anymore. Okay. I did like that, I mean, the girls being taken to the trials, that was interesting. I did not know where it was going when they got, you know, taken in the middle of the night. And I thought it was gonna be really, really bad. And then we find out that they're separated at the trials and like they're naked too, right? Like what? The why? You just, you just trying to add trauma on? I don't know. It just felt unnecessary for them to be naked. And I was really anxious about where that was going to go just because again, Gwyn, everything that Gwyn had gone through, like when we finally learned that like the, her trauma is coming from watching her sister die, her twin sister, and then, you know, being repeatedly assaulted after all of that, it was just sad. It was very, very sad, obviously. And I was very scared to see where the trial was gonna go. So I'm I'm so pleased with the fact that these girls were self-sufficient. Like they didn't need each other. They had each other, but they didn't need each other to steal one of the Illyrians that were so freaking sexist the entire time. Like it was just annoying. And I mean, it was a good thing because throughout the entire trilogy, the first trilogy, we see that the Illyrians are very unwilling to let women train and, uh, they just think that they're not gonna help them at all because they can never be as strong as the men. I mean, they're just so willingly being oblivious and ignorant to the fact that, you know, it's not always brawn, it's it's brains too. You, there's, there's strategy, isn't there? I liked seeing them find each other again. I liked that their like bracelets linked them. I liked that they took the hard route up the, up the mountain. I mean, we knew it was gonna go there because like that's what's being hinted the entire time. We know that like they're gonna take the hardest route up the mountain just like the boys did and that everyone's gonna be against them and we also get that hint that like she's going someone is going to be holding the line just like that one mythical person did all that time ago which this kind of drops into one of my theories I I don't remember like the details of it but I'm pretty sure that stone at the top of mount on top of the mountain or maybe something that's within the mountain hi Chala is like a death object as well just like the harp and the mask and like all those things uh, i thought it was going to come into play in this it didn't um we instead get the fight scene with the queen well first we get the fight scene with cassian which uh that was wild because she'd already been holding the line so that emery and gwyn could make it to the end which was sad because obviously they were both injured she was going to hold it and she's against that one brute of a guy let's not even i don't remember his name he's not worth it and then there's cassian who saves her but only to kill her because he's being controlled by the crown. I feel like he broke out of the crown's spell maybe a bit too easily, but then seeing the queen, this this whole time when they're saying that magic is unreachable within the trials, I was kind of wondering how it was going to play out for Nesta because her magic is not anything that they'd ever seen before. Her magic is death itself. It's an entity. She's going to become a death lord for the most part like that is the hints that we're getting is she is a death lord so like how could a simple spell block that you know but either way the queen shows up cassian you know it's all going bad and i loved seeing nesta use her powers on the freaking queen and she gave her exactly what she wanted and then some because yeah the queen just wanted to turn back time she just wanted to be young and pretty again that way she could live forever as a pretty young thing instead of a old crone i guess and she should have just, you know, taken what she had and, and run with it. She should never have tried to get young because Nesta messed her up. She, she brought back time. She turned it back. She made her young again. And then she just kept turning it until she literally crumbled to dust. It was so 
satisfying. It was so satisfying to see the amount of power that Nesta has. We're getting hints of it the entire time and she is immensely powerful and she can control it like in a way that we haven't really been able to see in other books by Sarah J Maas. Like typically the people with a ton of power don't have an easy control over it and Nesta was almost like born into it. It just it made it, it made it so much worse when right after this Feyre's having her child of freaking course and Nesta gets there and Feyre's about to freaking die. I'm so fucking annoyed. Like I I know why this had to happen. This this was like a proof kind of thing. This was one of those moments where Nesta really finally proved to the group that she was for the group, not for herself. And also, it was a good thing for Nesta because she didn't want the power that she had. Like, not really. I wanted her to have the power she had. Um, and so she takes the harp and she she thrums, strums the last string, which stops time, which is really cool, you know? <laughs> like, that was sick. I mean, even death itself halts at time. That's cool. And you just see her making a deal with the cauldron because she wants to save Feyre and she can't figure out how. She has no, she doesn't have that much control over her power yet because she probably could have been able to if, well, she, she definitely could have been because that was the deal with the cauldron was just to show her the knowledge to be able to use it. She calls on the cauldron, which has been kind of talking to her this entire time. I'm very unsure on this. Like what is up with that like old, not old, I guess not young, but not old, all knowing kind, warm presence. What is that? Like, I, is that the cauldron or is this gonna still keep going on in the rest of the books? I feel like it will. It's like, yeah, you got a deal. I take my power back. I'll give you the knowledge. Let's do it. And of course she saves Feyre's life, makes her hips big enough. And then she makes her own hips big enough because you know, just in case in the future, makes sense, I guess. And she doesn't have her freaking power. I mean, she has something. I'm very, I'm super curious to see where this goes because it seems like she's been left with still a sizable amount of power. It feels very reminiscent of another story, which if you've read all of Sarah J Mass's books, you will know exactly what I'm talking about, but she's left with something. So is she still gonna be a death lord? Can she still control those death objects? Is this gonna like be an issue later on when she is, I mean, really they've been using her death powers. Like, is now Alid gonna have to become more involved? Is Alid finally gonna grow a backbone? Because it seems like that's where this is going because there's that whole scene, like that fight scene that Nesta and Alid had where Nesta's like, you can't do things because like, I don't want you to. I don't want you to be exposed to this. And Alid's like, I'm not soft, you know? And I love that because Alid has just been this very gentle, soft, kind, loving, breakable character and I want to see her grow into a badass. Like I want the opposite to happen. I hate that Nesta went from badass to like soft older caring presence of a sister and now I need a lead to rebel. I need I need her to just become a badass or something because I'm so freaking upset by that. That is the only thing I'm mad about in this book and I can't even be that mad. That's why it's still a five star. It's just, I don't know. I didn't want her to change that much. I, I didn't want her to be like completely self-destructive. I didn't want her spending everyone's money and like sleeping with guys just to hurt herself. Not to, not, not for funsies, like kind of for funsies, but not for funsies. We're very unclear on that obviously, but I didn't want her, I didn't want her to like lose herself to become a different version. And that's kind of where we got. And I mean, maybe we don't, maybe like I'll be, impressed with how it keeps going. Also, let's address the only other elephant in this room. Yeah, of course her and Cassian were mates. That's literally been hinted at since A Court of Mist and Fury. Like, he crawled when his wings were shredded. He had no consciousness and when Nesta screamed, he crawled. He's he's her mate, duh. Every time I've seen someone be like annoyed by it, it's like, you really saw it coming though. You know you saw it coming and if you didn't see it coming or if you hoped that it wouldn't, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I get why, because it's like a weird storyline. I really feel like a lead. Obviously her mate is Lu Lucian Lucian. I don't know how to say his name. I say it Lucian in my head, but that's her mate and she's been denying it. And I'm very okay with that because obviously Sarah J Mass always has the mates and my leg has gone numb, child, I'm sorry. And I feel like she's gonna end up with Azriel. But I also thought that there was gonna, <laughs> that there was gonna be like an Azriel Cassian threesome with Nesta. I feel like that was hinted at. And I've heard since then that Sarah J Mass actually did edit out like a very steamy scene uh, with Nesta. And I'm, I'm gonna assume that it was that. I'm gonna assume that there was a threesome originally and that they took it out of the story for whatever reason. And if that is what it is, Sarah J Mass, I know you're not watching this, but like if for whatever reason 
you are or if anyone who has the ability to get me that scene is watching this i would love to i would love to read it i won't let anyone else see it i pinky swear pinky promise i won't even tell anyone i just want to know so yeah uh i'm just curious you know i for research purposes just uh like not not like that like more like research of just his character that's why oh my god my, t my legs tingling <sighs> feels so weird um that's all I have to say about this book. I guess there was a lot because I think that I filmed for 30 minutes now and editing this down is going to be very intriguing. Intriguing? Not intriguing. It's interesting. That's my thoughts. This has been a very interesting thing for me to edit, like as far as the vlog goes, because I think that I always feel a lot of emotions or like I get very in, in my own head too about Sarah J. Mass's books that I do read. I've never filmed myself reading like the books that are similar to this story like Air Fire or Court of Mist and Fury and they're books that I think I would have very similar vlogging experiences with because in this one I've noticed that most of the vlog yes is me talking about it me talking about Nesta but it's a lot of um like emotion I guess like personal experiences versus just reading the story but it's a weird thing for me to put out on the internet let's all ignore it like don't ever comment on that. Let's just talk about the book in the comments. I just, I was just saying things. That was just for fun. That was just for funsies. They're just in there. Just for, I don't know. Let's just not talk about it because I don't talk about emotions in that capacity. I will talk about a character's emotions all day. I might even compare a character's emotions to my own, but I will not talk about my own emotions. No, no. And I'm sure that like, as I'm saying this, there's probably been a million times that I've talked about my own emotions, but not right now, you know? So that's it. Um, this is the first time I filmed in this uh, new place. And if it's echoey, I'm sorry. My background <laughs> is not a background. Um, there's a lot of videos that I meant to post at the end of December that just were not able to go up because again, I ended up moving and this move has been long. I mean, every time I think a move's gonna be short, it's, it's not and it's never going to be. And I'm not even kind of halfway, partially, even a little bit done moving, but I have to get back in the swing of things and I'm hoping to get up a lot of the videos that I already have the footage for. Like, it's just sitting there waiting to be finished or edited. Yeah, hopefully you'll see those soon. I'm sorry that like Grinchmas fell through. I had the best intentions and then Christmas Eve came and that was not, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And then I just moved and then I still couldn't do it. And Chala is here to defend my honor and I appreciate you. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video today. No, 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 not defend my honor. Uh, that's going to be it for this video today, guys. Um, again, thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring. Check them out down below if you wanted to subscribe or, you know, even learn more about them. And I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.